Welcome to Yellow Dirt Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. So it's that time of year. It is um, time to start planning for your fall garden if you're planning to plant this fall garden. So fall vegetables are grown through fall, but they're planted in late summer because they still need the warmth to get started um, because plants slow down when it gets cooler but if they're already established and doing well before it gets cold you're good to go and some plants grow better in the cold but they do need to be growing before it gets cold um, for instance garlic needs to be planted while it's still cold because they go into a dormancy phase and that's when they separate from my uh, research. Uh, that's when they separate, but then they don't start growing until it warms back up. And so tonight I'm going to tell you what I am growing for fall. I'm going to tell you how I plan to start it. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna plan this out as well. My notebook was a casualty of cleaning the greenhouse. And so we're gonna grab another notebook and I'm gonna show you how I plan out when I'm gonna plant um, start the seeds. I plan out when I'm going to plant it. Um, I plan all of those things out. I also plan out where it's going to go in the garden. I'm going to be honest with you, that doesn't always shape up because I may say it's going to go here, but something else may be growing from the summer garden. And so I kind of plant wherever, but we're going to go ahead tonight and plan out the fall garden together. So the first thing I do is I decide what I'm going to plant. Um, and so I will say, I always kind of overplant, but I absolutely love it. I also like to have different varieties. It's just a thing that I do. So I go through my little photo case and I pull out exactly what I know I want to plant. This is also a good time to start ordering the seeds that you may not have anymore. Like maybe you put, it's about to rain. We need some rain, y'all. It's very hot here. <laughs> my AC is fixed though. <laughs> Thank God. Um, so maybe you put the empty seed package back wherever you store your seeds and now you're like, oh my goodness, I don't have any more. So it's a good time to also go ahead and uh, order any seeds that you don't have anymore. Um, and so I always love to do a variety in the fall. For one, because everything's so green in the fall. So if it's all gonna be green, at least let it be a lush patch of green, right? Okay, let's talk about what I'm gonna grow. And then I'm going to explain to you how I decide when I start them in the house, how I decide when I plant them out. If you have a feed and seed store around you, use it as a resource. I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I'm a paper and pencil type of girl. I've seen people do this electronically. I tried it, it didn't work for me. I'm just a paper and pencil type of girl, I just am. All right, let's talk about what I'm gonna grow really quick. I've already pulled them out. I'm gonna run through them super quickly because I wanna show you how I actually plan out the fall garden. So, all right, we're gonna start with kohlrabi and we have two varieties, a delicatia white and a white Vienna. We are also going to grow a good amount of broccoli. I want to this year, hopefully, <laughs> I say it every year and it never happens. I want to hopefully preserve some broccoli this year. Like I want to put a good amount of broccoli into the freezer this year. So we have always broccoli rob. I doubt I'm going to be really preserving the broccoli rob, but I do love broccoli rob. We have some Wartham 29. I got that from a seed swap. Waltham. <laughs> 29. Green Goliath, which I really like. It's a shorter plant and I do like that. I don't like when they get like super tall and then I got to try to stake them up. So if you're looking for a shorter plant, you might want to look at the Green Goliath. We're going to do some purple sprouting broccoli. Not that I know anything about it. I just see people grow it and I think it's so cool looking. And so well, those are the broccoli varieties we're going to do. I feel like I have more. I just don't know where they are, which that's cool. <laughs> and I'll probably have to order some too. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There's a green magic. That's from Johnny's Seeds. And I order my seeds from anywhere. If it's a variety I think I'd like, I order it from there. Um, we're going to do some bok choy. Bok choy grows really quick um, and it's very tasty. I share it a lot with uh, my coworker. So we're going to try cauliflower again. 
going to be honest with you, I am not planting a lot of cauliflower. I don't have the best success with it, but I am still going to try it. And I do like it. So we're going to do that. Oh, we have one more kohlrabi. And that is the uh, purple variety, early purple Vienna. I do love kohlrabi. I think I showed you all last year I make my kohlrabi fries. Don't taste like fries, just in the shape of the fries, but absolutely delicious. Kohlrabi tastes a lot like um, cabbage and a broccoli stem. I think it's so good and it's so sweet. I, I absolutely love um, that. So, all right, let's head on over to cabbage Brussels sprouts. We're going to do a Long Island Improved Brussels sprout. We're going to do a gron, groner, gronger. Groninger, <laughs> a Groninger Brussels sprout. Um, and then I have some golden acre cabbage. Well, I actually don't have anything. That seed packet is empty. <laughs> um, there's another cauliflower in here, Snowball X. I'm never very excited about it because it never grows very well <laughs> for me. Uh, we're going to do an early Jersey Wakefield. That's like the cone shaped cabbage and i haven't ever successfully harvested one but i really want to so i'm gonna keep growing it <laughs> and then we have a tender sweet from johnny seeds so those are our broccoli kohlrabi cabbage that we're gonna grow then we're gonna do some american purple top turnips i've had really good success with those turnips so i'm excited about that root vegetables that we're gonna grow we're gonna do some shallots you know, I did these over winter and they came out really nice. I thought they were onions. And then I was like, wait, those are the shallots. They came really, you know, I'm going to show y'all one real quick. Totally off script. <laughs> That's one right there. I harvested that last week. Came out real nice. I like shallots. I think shallots are so delicious. And maybe they grew a little bit too long, but they were bent over. So probably fine. Um, but yeah, nice size shallot right there those are the zebrum <laughs> let's put that back up and you can look it up yourself because <laughs> i don't know if i said it right but yeah they grew really nice um I, I did not overwinter did i say overwinter i didn't i planted them at the beginning of spring but they're very nice they grew really nice I grew them in the in the holes of the bricks my foot is stuck under my couch i'm not sure how i did this <laughs> I'm going to put this back <laughs> okay moving on we are going to do some i think these are the detroit dark beets i tore the top of it uh, we have some turnips some golden glow turnips have not successfully grown those either but i'm going to give it a try i do love a good turnip those are the same detroit dark early scarlet globe radishes cylindra beets and we all know I don't do well with beets, but I keep trying. I like the greens, too. So even if I don't grow the beets, I like the greens. They're good. A Navone yellow rutabaga. A rainbow mix of carrots. Oh, growing my carrots in bags. Somebody asked me, you know, how did they do in bags? They did really good. Um, I always forget to show them because, <laughs> because I'm, they're in the same row as the peppers. And so I'm always, like, excited about the peppers right now. But that's how I'll be growing my carrots, and they did really good in the bags. Uh, purple top globe turnips. Oh, our Texas grano onions. I'm trying parsnips for the first time this year. I'm so excited. Like, I've never grown them before. I don't even know if I've ever eaten them before. But um, I see people growing them. I'm interested. <laughs> These are some carrots that I got from my local feed and seed store. Do you see the price on that? 85 cents. This whole pack of seeds was 85 cents. And I got them in 2020 when I first started gardening and they are still around because you get so much. A cherry bell, radish, gourmet blend of radish. So that's just a mix of a whole bunch of radishes. Oh, purple plum. I think they are so pretty. If they actually grow that way, because I did grow them last year. They weren't that pretty in purple. <laughs> some white globe radishes, some icicle short top radishes. And then I got a free seed from Mary's Heirloom Seeds when I was looking for all of my medicinals. I got a lot of medicinals from over here. You may want to check her out. Um, and it was pretty fast shipping, too, and she gave me a free seed. So a cherry bell radish. Those are my root vegetables. And now let's talk about the leafy greens I'll be growing. 
We have some Bloomsdale spinach from my local feed and seed store. 85 cent pack of uh, seeds. Some yellow canary Swiss chard. That's from Seeds Now. Seeds Now used to sell seeds for 99 cent. They're like $1.99 now. Still not bad considering. Um, some Bates collards from my local feed and seed store. Some dwarf blue curled kale. Ooh, collards. Morris heading collards. Some Georgia Southern collards. And a collard tree. A ex coworker, she no longer works with me, gave me those seeds. And I have not successfully grown a collard tree yet, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> Red romaine lettuce in my gardener seeds. A bib butterhead lettuce. A marvel of four seasons lettuce. A Paris Island Cos romaine. A slow bought lettuce which I probably would plant those as early as possible since it's supposed to bolt slowly. <laughs> Curly kale from a local feed and seed store. Red Russian kale. I fell in love with red Russian kale last year. Alacionado kale. Also fell in love with that. And just a basic Swiss chard. So those are all the seeds that we are going to start with in the next week or so. Um, all right, let's talk about how I plan to plan for this. Listen, I got hungry halfway through this, y'all. <laughs> so I made some uh, shishito peppers. I forgot to get my ranch dressing. Anyway, and I made a bacon and tomato sandwich. I didn't have any poblano peppers left. But I got like three different varieties of tomato on that sandwich. I'm going to eat that sandwich and then we're going to get back to this video. <laughs> Listen, it's been a long week, y'all. I'm sorry. I ain't got all thrown up. I'm on the couch. I finished eating. <laughs> I got on the couch and started watching, watching uh, reels. Anywho, all right, let's get back to work because it is it's July the 29th. So, so um, let's see. First thing you want to do is decide what you're going to grow because you don't know when you should start things if you don't know what you're going to grow. And of course, you can do it wild and willy-nilly and just see what happens because listen, y'all know me. I will do stuff like that, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it this year. Um, I haven't done it many years before, but I will because that's like a part of gardening, having fun at it too. So when you decide what you want to grow, I was telling you, if you have a local feed and seed store, um, use it to your advantage. This planting chart that I have here came from my local feed and seed store and so it tells you when you can plant things in your area from seed from plant how long it normally takes it to grow um, and so I love this chart I had it on my wall downstairs where I start seeds but I took it down because how am I going to plant if it's on the wall downstairs <laughs> and then I have just a basic composition notebook nothing fancy and then I like to use pencil so basically what I'm gonna do is decide what I want to grow which I've already shown you and then I'm gonna look at this chart to decide when I should start planting it I really love this and I got it from my local feed and seed so if you have one of those around you may want to check it um, your Lowe's or your Home Depot might have it too. Who knows? I got it from my local feed and seed store. And so I use this to decide when I need to start the seeds in-house. Um, I also think about the ones that I'm going to plant direct sown. So that's the first thing I'm going to do too. I am going to, well, it's kind of the second thing that I'm going to do. I am going to write down what I need to start from seed, what I need to direct sow, and when. All right, so we're going to start here with what I'm growing. So I am growing radishes. I want to direct sow those. I'm going to do turnips. I'm going to direct sow those as well. Rutabaga. I'm going to direct sow those. And so now we know exactly what we're going to grow, what we're going to direct sow, and what we're going to start as a plant. And so now we're going to use this chart 
and you can also google so if you google it's gonna tell you like how early you need to plant you do not want me to be great tonight i am so sorry i didn't know you were still recording i was coming out here to do something to eat and i'm on the phone I know you're so you can't go get something to eat, but can you be quiet? Can you be quiet about it? I'm on the phone, so no. Well, listen, tell the guy you can call it back. Can I be great? I'm not even trying to make myself great, if I'm honest, because I done laid on the couch, I done ate food, all of that. <laughs> okay, so we are going to use this chart to decide when we need to start things. I normally plan out in fall. Um, so that my plants are about four to six weeks old but with fall planting when it's super hot it's really like tough on the fall plants and they can bolt um, they can die <laughs> so I normally planned out like the first week in September now if it's still like super hot the first week of September I may push it back a week or two uh, but that's why I am about to start next week because if I'm doing four to six weeks then the first week in September, um, I'm already behind if I'm doing six weeks. But it's okay. I, I promise you, it's okay. Especially if you're in the long growing season like I am. So, for instance, let's look at um, let's look at cabbage. And so, cabbage. If I want to do it from seed, if I want to plant the seed in the ground outside, not starting to plant, then I need to have that done by August the fifteenth to October the first right there that's the line for cabbage but if i want to do it from a plant then i can start planting out the plants even um from 9 1 which is what i said first week in september all the way up through october and this is where you can also succession so so i could start some cabbage seeds this week or next week or in the week after and then plant them out weeks apart um, i'm not going to do that <laughs> I'm not going to do that because I am not disciplined. <laughs> so when I plant out, I will be planting everything out. And so I'm going to say I'm going to start the seeds on August 1st. So that'll make them four weeks that I, that, you know, if I plant out September the 1st. But because I have so much time for cabbage plants, um, I may plant them out later. I may plant them out early. You know, who knows? So we're going to start the seeds August 1st. Um, we're going to move over to broccoli. And since we're going to do it from starts, it also says the same thing. 9-1. So we'll start the seeds on August 1st. Or let's be clear, the first week in August. <laughs> Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts should have been started a while ago. <laughs> because I could have started planting them out at the beginning of August. Uh, Brussels sprouts take a long time to grow. Um, I didn't have luck with Brussels sprouts last year, but I, we also got a really, really, really hard freeze like most of the world did, the Arctic blast. So um, I'm behind. Should have started those a while ago, but we are still going to start them on August the 1st. Onions and shallots, um, I'm going to also start those on August 1st. So one of the things that I will not be direct sowing, you know, in August is the garlic because garlic needs that cold period and so i'll be planting out garlic probably sometime you know november or december um and i will not be planting the potatoes um at the same time as i plant out my other fall vegetables the potatoes will actually go in sometime next week like i direct sow those next week um irish potatoes on my on my chart says i can plant them out august the first so when i'm starting these seeds for fall i'll be actually planting out potatoes for my fall harvest okay so now that we know everything that we're going to grow everything that we're going to start we need to know how many of everything we need. And in my case, I'm just going to draw out my garden. Nothing super fancy. This is going to be the opening at this end, and it's going to move back towards the fence. And so we know we have asparagus at the beginning, so we'll just do the bed here of asparagus. And then we do have an extra bed over here. Nothing fancy, like I said. <laughs> I'm not an architect. So this is a growing space. Um, in this space, I can't remember. It's, it's kind of like you maybe got 10 square feet all the way across um, and then maybe two square feet. So this is probably 20 square feet. I don't know. 
<laughs> it does not have to be perfect. Um, and plus, if I have extra stuff, I can put it somewhere else. So this is the bed where the beans and things are now. Um, right across from it is where the to, uh, where the bags that have tomatoes in them is at. So I'll do like a small little bag section. It's going to have uh, potatoes in it. It has tomatoes in it right now. So we do bags. Right behind that is the open garden space that has the eggplant now. Right here. And then you have strawberries. So I know I don't have this space because the strawberries are perennial. And I just type write that in. Right behind that is a few more rows of bags. And those will have potatoes. So potatoes. Right now it has tomatoes in it. And so we'll do bags. And that are the sweet potatoes that's in the Vigo garden bed. And so once those sweet potatoes finish, this is where I put my garlic again this year. So I'm going to say garlic and then I'll say Vigo just so I remember, although I know. Um, and then behind that are the pots that have the mint and things in it. So we're not going to do anything with those pots. Those, those will just stay there. We'll come over here and put the middle bed. And so the middle bed is here. And of course, that'll be filled with other things. I think I have about 16 spaces in this one. So there's 16 spaces where I can grow things in. It's like eight feet long, and then there's two square feet each. So 16 spaces here. Um, and then you have the cinder block berries beds over on this side and back here you have your vigo garden bed with bags and then you know there's the little garden bed so i'll make this a, a, a little bit different because you got the mint and stuff over here so we do it like this mint <laughs> and then there's that extra garden bed that has sweet potatoes in it now and beans with the trellis and then the other one is over here as well that's now growing the cantaloupe and watermelon so simply like so simple that's how i'm growing out my bed so there's about 16 spaces here i'm gonna say it's maybe about 20 spaces here and when i say spaces i'm just saying a square foot um here these beds are seven by four so that gives us 21 spaces i think this is too much but actually it's not because it's a front and a back well We'll find out. No, I'm sorry. I said 21. It's 28. So that's 28 spaces there. 28 spaces here. Here, I would probably say I have about 12 to 14. Um, the Vigo garden bed. Not sure what I'm going to put in that. But I could probably get a few broccoli. Maybe four. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Probably could get like two broccoli. And maybe put some radishes or some turnips in this bed back here um, and over here it's probably enough for I'm gonna say 10 spaces oh now I know exactly where I have space for and what I can grow and then of course radishes and things can be put in just in random spaces the same thing with turnips and so that's how I'm gonna plan out how many plants I can grow how much space I have for these plants and so just like my summer garden I don't plant everything in the same place. Like um, I will mix collards and cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower all in the same bed. And the way I look at it is if a pest finds one plant or two plants, they don't find all my plants. So I always, you know, mix it up. It's just, it's kind of what I do. Um, I also, Last year, tried to plant things in the cinder block beds that maybe needed to be covered. But I don't think I'm covering this year, so it doesn't matter where I plant them. Um, because I'm not going to cover anyway. <laughs> so, what I would like to decide first is which vegetable I want a lot of. I want a lot of broccoli, for sure. Um, cabbage, I don't do a lot of preserving of cabbage because I don't like uh, sauerkraut. I don't like coleslaw i don't like that stuff so i don't need to grow a lot of cabbage but i do like cabbage for like fresh eating so i'm probably gonna look at doing like 10 to 12 cabbages 
So we'll say 10 cabbages, uh, broccoli. I really want like 20, 25 plants of broccoli. And okay, that's the other thing I'm gonna say. So in my cinder block raised beds, there are 28 spaces. And I have tried to grow four plants in a row. Now, it works, but the bed is full. I have to make sure that there's a lot of nutrients because a lot of the fall plants are very heavy feeders. So I will plan for a whole bunch, but then I may not actually plant them. Also, I still have my bags as an option. So I'm going to put potatoes in a lot of them, but all of the bags won't be available, um, you know, when it's time for me to plant the potatoes, which is sometime next week. Well, that's the earliest I can plant the potatoes is sometime next week. Um, I can plant them all the way up through, it says the 15th. So I only got a 15 day window according to my local feed and seed chart. Um, so anyway, um, kale, collards. Those things are leafy greens and I can plant them closer together and I won't get huge leaves, but you know, I'll get small leaves, but leaves are leaves. Um, so I can plant those closer together. I love to preserve kale collards, uh, Swiss chard in the fall so that in the summer when I'm not able to grow them because they may bolt, I'll have that. So I'm probably going to start about um, the kale. I really like kale. I like to make kale chips with it. Listen, y'all. I know this video is very much um, like me just rambling, but honestly, this is how I plant out. It's just me kind of talking to it, think, talking through it and thinking about it. And so I know it's not like the step by step, but I hope some of it is helpful to you. Um, so the kale, I want a lot of kale. So I'm probably going to try to do, I'm going to say like 12 kale plants. Um, I'm probably going to try to do... 10 collard plants, kohlrabi, I don't, I have not found a way um, just yet to preserve it, and I'm sure there is a way, if you know a way to preserve it, then you can drop that down in the comments um, for me, but I'm probably only going to do about uh, 6 to 8 kohlrabi, because, no, I'm going to do more than that, so I'll probably look at doing like 10 kohlrabi, but you know, once you harvest kohlrabi, that's it. That's all you get is that one kohlrabi. But because I can plant kohlrabi all the way up until... That's not right. That can't be right. It's saying that I can only plant kohlrabi up until June, uh, September the 1st. That can't be right, y'all. Might be right. <laughs> so I'm going to probably do like 10 kohlrabi plants. Brussels sprouts, we're only doing two. I did a whole bunch of Brussels. Okay, we're going to do four just in case something dies. We're going to do four Brussels sprout plants. Um, but Brussels sprouts take up a lot of space. They have big leaves. They get really big. And I don't want to take up space for something that I probably not even going to get a harvest out of. We ain't planting no more than two, two cauliflower. We're going to figure out how to grow cauliflower before we... Um, before we keep planting cauliflower and taking up space. Because that's a big plant too. Um, the onions and the shallots. I'm just going to throw some seeds in. Because I am still going to plant them back in the back in the holes of the bricks. And there's so many brick holes out there. I could go count them. But I'm not going to. <laughs> so we're just going to say um, a lot. And that's what we're going to put. Swiss chard. We'll probably do... I don't know. Swiss chard grows really quick and really big leaves. So we'll probably do four Swiss chard plants and a lot of lettuce. That's <laughs> what we're going to say. So now that I know exactly how many of each plant that I want to grow, I will go back to my little terrible drawing. <laughs> and I will put in where I want to place all of these plants. So that is... My planning for fall right there. And that's literally all I do to plan my garden for fall. Summer is much more intense because there's so many more options of things I like to grow um, in the summer. But in fall, it's just pretty much broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, you know, that kind of stuff for fall. But that's really all I do for fall. Um, I hope this video was helpful. <laughs> if it was, give me a thumbs up. 
Um, give me a, leave me a comment and let me know if it was helpful for you. Let me know if there's anything else that you want to know for fall. I will take you along with me when I start my seeds and things like that. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye, y'all.